Once upon a time, in the thorny world of health insurance and prescription drug costs, someone came up with a novel idea. The pharmacy benefit manager. A what? A pharmacy benefit manager, or PBM. You may never have heard of them. But if you're insured, these companies help decide the drugs you get at the pharmacy and how much you pay for them. So what are they and where do they come from? Back in the late 1960s, health insurers began expanding drug coverage, and they got tangled up in the sheer volume of claims for these prescriptions. Then came a bold business idea. Why not make money by processing those drug claims for them? So PBMs took the messy task out of the insurer's hands, and that's how PBMs were born. Later, when drug spending spiraled out of control for employers and health plans, PBMs touted their ability to use their negotiating power to secure better prices and even bulk discounts from drug makers. But that's not all they do now. PBMs also help draft lists of the drugs that are covered by an insurer. They're called formularies. For drug makers, getting a preferred spot on the formulary is really attractive. Kind of like getting on a VIP list at a popular club. It can mean a leg up on the competition. In the 1990s, drug makers found this concept so appealing that companies like Merck and Eli Lilly started owning PBM businesses. But that didn't sit well with some consumer watchdogs. What if the drug companies kept competitors off their lists? So the Federal Trade Commission stepped in and drug companies spun off their holdings. Bada bing, bada boom. Now three large PBMs control about 80% of the market. CVS Caremark, OptumRx, and Express Scripts. They say they save employers and insurers millions a year, but they also make money. How do they do this? They pit one drug maker against another for the best price in a class of drugs and for a seat on the formulary. Does this bring down the price? It can, but not all the time, and not often for patients. As businesses, PBMs need profit margins. They make money by pocketing the difference between how much they pay for the drugs and how much they charge their clients for the drugs and other services they provide. You know... The markup. Another way PBMs make money is from rebates. Yup, rebates. Think of them like the coupons you send in when you buy a new brand of soap or an electronic gadget. Pop it in the mail and a few months later you get a check for $3. That happens with PBMs, but on a much larger scale. PBMs insist that they pass most of the rebate (laughs) savings to their clients, but they keep the actual numbers a trade secret. Recent studies suggest that PBMs and insurers pocket the money, leaving little direct benefit for patients. And some experts say rebates just encourage PBMs to favor the medications with the biggest rebates. That's instead of the cheaper alternatives that are just as effective. Lawmakers in California are working on legislation that requires PBMs to provide more information. Congress and other states might, too. So are PBMs a good idea? Yes and no. They have helped keep some drug prices and premiums lower. But consumers don't see that savings directly and may be limited in their drug choices. And of course, prices for some drugs keep going up.